All right, welcome on Security Podcast listeners. Welcome to episode 163 of the Unsecurity Podcast. The date is Friday, January 28th. You'll be hearing this uh, next week on Tuesday, as usual. Joining me as usual is uh, my good friend Brad Nye. Brad, how you doing? Cold. I'm jealous of you. You're jealous. Yeah. I don't know, man. You got to be careful what you're jealous of because my wife, uh, we were talking about this and she's like, I would eat, I would trade lives with you. And I was like, well, here, let me tell you about my day. And it was meeting, 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 work, work, work. And she's like, well, I'm going to trade places like where you are. I'm like, yeah, that's probably, that's probably better. But yeah. Uh, but also joining us, and I'm really excited about this. This is, uh, we have a special guest joining us today. We have Max from uh, Lima Charlie, which is a pretty cool. Now, Max, you, your name is, let me see, I'm, I'm going to try to say it. Uh, Maxime Lamoth Brassard. Is that close? That's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Welcome to the show, man. I'm excited you're here. Thank you. Super happy to be here. So, Max, for people who, uh, you know, there's a bunch of names in our industry, but for people who don't know Max, I'm going to give you just a little bit of his background because this is what really excites me. I love different perspectives. You know, different experiences bring different perspectives. Max has just a, I think there's a lot of stuff we could get out of this guy. Uh, CrowdStrike back in 2013, Google uh, as a senior security engineer, a uh, whole bunch of really good background there, intelligence, you know, background. Um, but in 2018, you branched off and started your own business called Lima Charlie. So anything you want to add right. to that? Is that pretty accurate? Did I say anything wrong? No, no, that's, uh, that's pretty accurate. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So tell me about what, what uh, t first of all, tell me about Lima Charlie. What is it? Um, sure. So Lima Charlie is a very different kind of vendor in the security space. So our focus is uh, we're kind of trying to, to bring security farther along to things like in, in general, like IT and cloud architecture around, you know, things like DevOps. So really what we're saying is, we're trying to remove kind of the whole aspect of most security vendors that's based on marketing and promises and really uh, provide security tools uh, like you would get infrastructure from AWS. So, you know, self-serve, our pricing's on the web page, uh, scale up, scale down, build monthly per usage, kind of all the, the ecosystem of like AWS, right? How it behaves, but cybersecurity specific tools and capabilities. So, we started with EDR, and that's like a, a, as a primitive that we put it. So again, we're not a security tool that's designed for, uh, I, I always joke, but like, you know, for my grandma to stop the Russians. Like, no, mm -hmm. it's it's a security tool that's designed for security professionals. Um, okay. And so we have like EDR and we have a bunch of other primitives that we've been adding. So the idea is, you know, if you're trying to do security, you're trying to, to build a security posture, you understand um, that you own you're able to go do that, you know, no, like no friction at all. You're not talking to salespeople or anything like that. That's awesome, man. And that's cool. one of my, we were talking before the show, that's one of my biggest, you know, peeves about this industry is just how we've become so marketing focused, right? If you call somebody, man, you're on a mailing list now. And not only that, you're on another mailing list and another mailing list and another mailing list. It's like, my God, I should have never made that phone call. And here, this is refreshing to see that we've got a security vendor who's providing, I think, I've never used the product. I, I will, because I'm looking forward to digging in a little bit more. Uh, well, here, we've got a vendor who's open, transparent, telling us what they do, what they do well. There's no other motive. We, you know, obviously, when you start a business, you need to make a living. But, you know, you're not trying to, uh, you know, almost steal from people. So I, I love that. I want to give you some kudos. For, for, um, our listeners, if you want to go check out Lima Charlie, it's limacharlie.io, correct? L I M A C H A R L I E dot io. That's right. Go go check them out. So, how's business been going? Great, great. I mean, we, uh, you know, in a way, we took the hard path, right? Because of exactly what you said, right? It, it, I think it would have been the the normal path for us to start a cybersecurity company and you know, hire a huge marketing team and a huge sales team to go and hound people and, and that kind of stuff. And that's not what we wanted to do. So, um, 
in a way we took the hard path, but I think it's, it's paying off because we work with a lot of super interesting people. Uh, we've got a ton of different like, companies and MSSPs that we work with kind of day to day. And, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a nice feeling waking up in the morning and knowing that the, for us, the proof's in the pudding because, you know, if, if our users are still there, it's because they like it, not because they're stuck in a three-year contract, right? So, um, so it's really nice. Well, and I remember because, you know, being a security guy for a long time and then starting in your own know, business, it's, man, it's so much different being a security person and a business person. You know, oh my gosh. So it, what have you found that to be like for you? Uh, yeah, that's that's very accurate. <laughs> for me, I would say, uh, that that like I've had the the benefit of having that trend like that uh, the transition to be over many years because I love the government right I loved intelligence in I don't know I'm gonna say 2012 2013 kind of thing and uh, and so you know when you're in the government you're intelligent uh, you know it's a bit of a cliche but it's also true right you're you're doing this out of you know like I want to help protect the country kind of thing right. Yep. So leaving and then going into private sector was sort of the, the first step of like joining an early startup like CrowdStrike. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that was like very well funded. They knew what they were doing. They were really, you know, firmly a business. Um, so it was really kind of the first like, oh, OK, yeah, I, I got to start thinking about what I'm doing in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so since then. It, it, I've kind of been, you know, like a little bit through the whole ecosystem and, and I was at Chronicle. Um, so again, kind of early startup and it's, but it's really Google, but it's also a startup. So it's been gradual in my case, but, but certainly, you know, the day that it's, that like, it's on you, it's not, uh, you know, you're not just part of a bigger machine. Uh, it, psychologically, it's different and it forces you, I think, to, um, to think about, you know, what are the things that are important to you and that you want to stick to? Um, and, you know, and it's it's all, you know, a gray space and we've got to find our way through that gray spectrum. Um, but there's some things you got to, you know, you kind of realize about yourself, like those are the things I want to keep. I love that. And and that, that, there's a, that's a good segue, you know, to your mission, right? So I'm, I'm on your website and I'm, and I'm just going to read it off because I think we're very much mission driven everything for us is mission before money, always. Um, if there's no value, if we're not providing any value to you, then don't pay us, don't, you know, get rid of us. We're, we're here to provide value. But here's your mission. I think it's very much in alignment with what we do. So at Lima Charlie, we are building a world where people and organizations can realize their full potential without compromising security along the way. We achieve this by enabling security practitioners to maintain full control of their operations while equipping them with the professional grade tools and infrastructure required to keep the world safe. That's, yeah, that's, awesome. Like that. that's yeah. awesome. Now, have you ever read yeah. the book, uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek? I don't think I did. I'm gonna send you, after the show, I'm gonna, yeah. I'll give you a gift. I'll, uh, really it, good. it really that's... is, because it, it works, it's, uh, Start With Why is, it's, it, when I read it the first time, it was like revolutionary. It was like, oh, it, oh, my brain makes sense now because I've been so mm-hmm. mission driven and I didn't know why I was different than other people, right? Especially in our industry, there's so much money driven greed stuff. And so I'm out here like, but we should help people, <laughs> you know? But after a while you're like, am I crazy? And then I read this book and I'm like, no, I'm, we're doing it right. So I love it, man. Yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, and after I read it, exactly the same thing. I was like, everything clicked. And then I went out and got his next one. It's uh, Leaders Eat Last, just about kind of leadership. Another, both of those easy reads, but wow, just made things make sense. I'll check those out. Sounds good. Well, because we've seen in in this industry, we've been around long enough to see these, to see startups, I think. And they start, they come in with a great story, a good, um, probably a good mission. And then, you know, VC comes or, you know, uh, investors come. And now, you know, when I, when, when we were tightly controlled, I didn't have to, uh, respond to an investor. I don't have to produce a return for you. I can just stay focused because I've seen many organizations 
over the years take that VC and it changes the entire culture. The, the company is completely different than they were. Did you see that at CrowdStrike or, you know, have you seen that? So, I, I mean, at CrowdStrike, I wasn't part of leadership at the time, right? So I, uh, it, it was my first kind of foray in that space, but I will say um, it was also the first time that I'd heard some of these concepts uh, told to me. And, and at the time it was, you know, like a, a shock, I don't mean like crazy, but just like, I'd never heard somebody put thing put uh, things in, in that in that following way, which was, um, you know, I came from very much that background of adding value, and um, and you know early CrowdStrike days, like product was really really early, right, and so at the time we had those discussions internally, and and I was trying to kind of push for, hey, um, we really need to do a service in this to be able to provide value. Because right now, putting that product out there doesn't really add a whole lot of value. It was really early, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so I was I was pretty strongly on the side of like, hey, we have some amazing security people. Let's, you know, let's try to to add a service to this to really get value. And uh, and and somebody high up had, had told me that's not gonna happen because uh, we are building a security, we are a product company because products, product companies are valued at a much bigger multiplier on their revenue than services. Yeah. And for me at the time, that was like, what, you know, <laughs> right. what are you talking? Like, I don't even know where to begin here. Um, obviously now I, I understand the dynamics behind that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, uh, so, so yeah, so there's, there's a lot of kind of learning along the way of that you realize that you also have to operate in the real world. Um, and I think, I think a lot, the, the biggest thing, and again, like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we're still fairly early on in our company, but I think the biggest thing uh, for us has been that um, the vision that we're putting forward uh, you know, again, I'll say it like as a tagline, uh, but like AWS of cybersecurity. And I, I know that, that asks for, that begs for way more questions than answers. Sure. <laughs> but, but like, you know, putting that, that long-term vision where, you know, the vision is not, hey, we have the, you know, this, this shiny product, you deploy it in any company in the world. And if this blinking red light goes, you know, starts blinking, you've been hacked. That, that sets the stage for us to find people and investors that that can see the value in this long-term vision um and and we can make sure that they're buying in to to you know where we're going rather than just starting in a more kind of fluid spot where we're doing something in security and some secret sauce and you know what is it exactly so i think right. that that's been helping us a lot yeah for sure and you know i, I had a because you know as as fr secure has grown and even secure studio uh Investors come out of the woodwork. I mean, they hear about you know the, some of the, the success you're having, and I mean, I don't know how many times we've been courted by, especially on FR Secure, uh, and we're seeing a huge increase now in Secure Studio, where you know they're talking all kinds of money, you know, and so you know, being me, you have this temptation of like, man, that's a lot of money, but then it's like, no, it's the mission, and I told John Harmon uh, a couple of years ago, man. You could give me all the money in the world and I'll sit on a beach somewhere and in the back of my mind, I will always know that I'm a sellout. I, will, I, I, I can't live with myself knowing I was a sellout. So we've still kept it. We have no investors and we'll see what happens. That's, that's nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, and it's easy to think about it when it doesn't happen to you, but the day that it happens to you is, is, you know, it's, it's a different, uh, it's a different deal. Yeah. For sure. And, and then you start to attract, you know, like Brad, Brad is so bought into the mission. I love working with him. Uh, it's, it's, it's a huge honor, but that same thing permeates throughout the rest of the organization, right? We have this mission driven company and the results show it. We didn't, need investment i mean last year we were still growing really fast and you know last year i think it was 25 million in sales um never selling out just awesome. you know, so i think it can be done it's just 
It's I think it's harder, for sure. It, it's a it's a lot of work. I mean, I've been here five and a half years, and I think the first year it was like five million in sales, five and a half. So in five years, it just has exploded. Yeah, and it's because it's done the right way. That's that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and especially yeah, when when you're able to get to that success while just doing the thing that uh, you know that that you know is is worth it. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. So let's let's talk more about Lima Charlie. So I'm on your site again, and I like your site by the way. It's simple. I like simple. Man, mm -hmm. complexity is the worst enemy of security. Any, anytime people from security talk to me. In the back of my mind, I'm trying to translate whatever the hell you just said into like one sentence. You know, like CISOs, you know, what does a CISO do? Two things. You consult the business to make good risk decisions and you implement those risk decisions. That's it. When you ask a CISO what they do for a job, it's like, la 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 la. Like, ugh, forget about it. <laughs> so, solutions uh, digital forensic, digital forensics and incident response, managed security service providers. Uh, these are solutions. That, so, these are people that you service. Uh, enterprise security teams, security startups, the products are. You got a nice list of products here. You know, truly, I'm gonna. I'm excited to try this out and take a look at it. Sensors, uh, detection, automation, and response. A uh, bunch of tel telemetry things. Um, manage detection, uh, detections and incidents. Uh, tons of extensions, tons of outputs. I mean, it's just a really flexible. I think you're well yeah. on your way to becoming that AWS of cybersecurity. But let's say that I'm a small, let's say that uh, where I've been working on most of my efforts lately is state government. So I've been beating up on them and they've been beating up on me and it's, it's a pain in the ass, uh, but I love it. Where would that fit? So if, if I were to take this to a state government, how would they use a product like yours? Or, or it, you choose whatever you want, really. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, um... So the, the, I think the, the, the fundamental thing that's going to shape where, where we go is the understanding that we are building a cyber, a, you know, cybersecurity tool for professionals. So what that means is this is not the thing you're going to deploy in the small organization that has one part-time IT person, right? <clears throat> that, that, that's not the goal for that. But rather it's uh, if you've got you know, an organization that's performing some security or threat MSSP, that's when you know you're going to get the value to kind of you know so it's it's for it tends to be for bigger like slightly bigger organization okay so assuming that that's the case for like a state organization like that um it will it will kind of vary but usually uh will come in and will start by will be replacing many different things right that's that's kind of the the whole idea of part of of, of aws is we're saying instead of running 30 different security vendors plus five vendors to glue those 30 together, um, you know, you can replace like 10 of those right now with like what we have and it's all designed to work together. So, you know, you're not fighting against different things. It's all in the same platform designed to work together, like S3 and EC2 and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so you could, uh, you know, you could deploy kind of the EDR tends to be the, the bigger, you know, the, the bigger product that people use a lot in Lima Charlie, uh, partly because it's such an enabler of different things, right? Because by deploying the EDR, they also get Windows event log forwarding. So now you, you don't have two vendors, like right there, you kind of reduce the vendors. Um, and then you're able to automate, uh, you know, the response to a lot of the, the things your EDR might detect. And so you might be able to strip out, you know, uh, like a sore product you were using in a, in a light way um, that maybe you don't need anymore. Um, and so you're able to integrate that and then you can start saying, well, I want, you know, the alerts to go to uh, the system that, that they have for ticketing, right? These alerts to start generating tickets. Um, and so you can do that like pretty easily with Lima Charlie. And then, then people will expand from there. That's the usual kind of path that people will take. They'll expand and start saying, you know what? Uh, we use one password in our organization. Um, it would be nice to be able to really easily when we investigate like, hey, this thing happened in the box. You know, it, did, it, did they try to log in using one password or have specific alerts on one password? 
And so they're able to, you know, for us, that's a sensor. So they're able to just add a one password sensor that brings in all of their, all the telemetry in. So it expands yeah. like that. So that's, uh, that's really is cool. It, the, for the, the incident response, is this more a proactive that should be installed ahead of time or, you know, somebody calls in and we've been breached? Yeah, it, it, honestly, it's both. It's really okay. both. Like, obviously, you get a ton of value if it's ahead of time because uh, we come with a year of full telemetry retention and searching. So okay. that means something happens, you can look back and, and know exactly in the past year what, what's been happening. But we still get a, a lot of people that use IR that use us because they get a different type of value. Um, they're able to deploy really, really quickly, right? They don't have to go and call up, you know, your typical EDR vendor and do the whole dance. Uh, so yep. 10 seconds, they've got their, their, their tenant like started. Um, they could use infrastructure as code, which we support. So they can build up, hey, when we go do an incident, what do we do? What's the first day? Well, you know, we want to collect raw Windows event logs from the box, all the boxes. So we'd want to do that at scale. We want to get real time then Windows event logs. And then, you know, we want to look for this thing and that thing. And then we want to deploy our triage tool across all endpoints. So they kind of, they're able to codify that super simply with us, you know, as infrastructure as code so that when they get that new incident, they're not, you know, spending a day going and doing the, the like the groundwork. They're able to just kind of go create the tenant, push the config. Okay. Collect all the things. I'll come back in an hour when everything's been ingested and I can start doing my job. Very cool. And it's not like some, I won't mention names, but, uh, there are some, uh, solutions out there that require a reboot to capture memory, which kind of kills the purpose. Right, right, right. Uh, so no, we, uh, what we do is, I guess it's a, a tiny bit of a sidestep, but like we, uh, we take a, uh, it's like a plugin type architecture or extension, or we call them add-ons. So what that means is, you know, you have the EDR and then for a lot of the capabilities that we want to be able to do, um, you, you can optionally enable them in your org, vast majority are free. Um, and, uh, and so that means we leverage a lot of things that are kind of industry best, best practices. Mm. So, you know, you want to do like full memory dump. We, we allow you to do that, but in the way that we do it is we leverage, you know, like well-known open source tools to go and yeah. we just automate the whole thing. Same thing with like, uh, you know, we have Velociraptor support, right? You're looking for like the, the IE history or edge history and Chrome history, like and all these things, um, it, you know, we don't want to go and rebuild the whole thing. So we just make it easy for you to kind of one click say, here's what right I on. want, go. Yeah, that's, I mean, and you know, this time is so critical in these, you know, when this happens and if you're waiting for email back or, you know, how do we deploy this? You know, yeah. That's, that's cool. That's right. very cool. One of the, the, that's totally true. And one of the things like super early on that, that I was really adamant about was, uh, the, the timing of the agent. I, I worked previously with other EDRs that, you know, are real time in that they exchange data every two to five minutes. Um, and that just drove me crazy, right? Because you're trying to do something simple and it's just every, every step of the way you add so much time lag. Um, so real timeness was a critical thing for me when, uh, when we built this. And so all the agents are in, in you know, uh, true real time, like hundred millisecond kind of constant connection real time. So if you go live on the box, you no, know, you're, you know, you're live on the box. You can do all the things that you need to do, uh, without, yeah. 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 Assuming you can do things like quarantine the box. So if you find an infection, your agent still connects, but that box is isolated. That's Very right. Cool. That's right. And we have a lot of like, it, we, we extend that to, uh, for example, we've got a Chrome sensor. So, or Chrome EDR, it's kind of a, you know, the, the name there is kind of fluid, but, um, the Chrome EDR. So it lives as an extension in Chrome. So you can do Chromebooks, but we treat it like an EDR. And so now we can start kind of conceptually saying, well, what's, what's network isolation in a browser? Um, and we can implement that just as if, you know, whether you're looking at a windows box or a Chrome, you know, browser. So now I can, I don't need to deploy SSL inspection everywhere. 
I, I can I can get visibility under you know SSL from the browser. That's not everything for sure, but at least I'm able to start putting in rules. You know, like some user you know pushed creds to something that isn't like the corp website, right? Or they access through the browser, uh, you know, a one-off letter of my corp website. This looks like spear phishing. Isolate the browser. So cool, cool stuff like that. That's nice. I like that you can kind of be targeted. Yeah, right. I like how it's very, it sounds very extensible, right? It's mm -hmm. just, you know, you can continue to extend things, add things into that framework. So, yeah, yeah this, this is very cool stuff. And I'm, look, again, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at, uh, at the site, endpoint detection response, and the cost is right there, documentation right below the link. So if you want to know how it works, you can simply click the documentation, read through it, and there you go. That's also another thing that frustrates me is when somebody says EDR, you know, oftentimes you're thinking one thing, I'm thinking something different. We don't standardize on what these things actually mean. So then they become buzzwords and then it starts to erode trust because, oh, it's just another buzzword. I don't, screw it. You know, you're just trying to steal more money. So the fact that you put Doc, you know, the documentation right below EDR, it makes it really easy for your customers to go, oh, what do you say? You know, what do you think when you say EDR? Well, look it up. So that's uh, kudos yeah. to you, man. Absolutely. I just Artifact recently ingestion. had that discussion about XDR. What does XDR mean to you? <laughs> when I first saw XDR, I, uh, Brad, was it, was it you that I ranted to? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, all XDR is what you should have done first in the first place with EDR. I mean, right, right. seriously. So we screwed it up yeah. last time, so we fixed it or made it better. We marketed it. Well, but it's got, you know, AI and machine learning. So oh God, don't get me know, started, Brad. <laughs> don't get me, I'm gonna, I got the blockchain sitting right here. Do you want me to bring it out? <laughs> all good. Okay. Yeah, if you start going off on AI, I'm bringing blockchain. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, me too. So EDR, awesome. Artifact ingestion. This is another thing, you know, replay. Replay is super useful when you have a, a oh, no. reliable way to do replay, right? Because the way computers work, and I think sometimes we just lose track of this, but computers only do what you tell them to do. That's it. So if you see a change in something in a technical environment, something told it to do that. And your job mm -hmm. oftentimes is to figure out what that delta is, what made it do that. And that replay is invaluable for stuff like that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So I love your tool, so, man. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I'm excited to play with it. Awesome, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a demo. <laughs> uh, I would say our, our team awesome. is already yeah. uh, oh. re reaching out. <laughs> right. Sounds so good. Keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah, and they're a great IR team too. So, you know, they'll, uh, we're also very, you know, transparent in the what in the feedback we give. So if we, I was on a call, oh, shoot. Uh, the IR team had brought me in to, uh, to get my take on something. And the, the, the vendor actually used the words invisible process. And so as, as he's giving me, you know, this pitch, you know, that da, 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 invisible process, that da, da, da. I'm like, oh, oh, what did you say? He said, what do, you, what do you mean? I go, did you say invisible process? And he's like, yeah. I go, what the hell is an invisible process? He goes, well, you know. And I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, how can it be invisible? Like, it's, it's there, but it's not there. Uh, what a yeah, it, it's, it, it feels like, um, like it's a, a script somebody learned and without necessarily knowing what's behind the term. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that happening. Well. Yeah. It's so frustrating. But that's why, and that's why we're so happy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I'm so, so happy that listeners. we we get okay. to work with 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 technical people, with IR folks, uh, you know, monitoring MDR folks, because uh, it's it's easy for us because we, uh, you know, we we don't BS anybody, right? Like, because it, all the documentation is there. It's just, it's an open, constructive, you know, discussion, not a, you know, we're trying to like find a way to weasel you into a, a year contract. Mm -hmm. Very cool. 
And Which, just, what would you say is your biggest challenge in getting new customers? What's your biggest challenge? Uh, for us, it's that <clears throat> what we're putting forward is not something that everybody's ready to, right? So I, I kind of joke about like the dentist office, right? But hey, this is not the tool that's for the masses. So uh, so that means our, our, our market, like a you know, perceived market is, is reduced in a way in the sense that like we're, we're looking at, you know, people doing security. Um, and the second one is that uh, the way that we do this is different enough that most people, uh, it's not intuitive for people, right? If we go to somebody and we say, hey, we're in XDR, uh, you know, it, they, they have a, a path in their mind that they're thinking of, of, you know, oh, okay, you know, it's gonna do everything automatically that, uh, you know, I'm gonna talk to like the next, you know, over the next month to three salespeople, and then we're gonna, you know, build some contract. And then, you know, my, it's gonna come from the CTO kind of all the way down. And we're, we're inherently a very different type of product, right? Like AWS back in the day, where you had a lot of people saying like, you know, I'm tired of racking and stacking, like for this one time, I'm just gonna go and, and you know, get like EC2. Um, for us, we're kind of more compatible in that way as well, where we, when we sell to people, when we get into companies, it's not top down, it, it's bottom up. And that's not something that most people in security are used to, right? This idea of, uh, you know, I'm taught as, as an individual contributor in a security company, I'm talking to a vendor who's interested in making sure that I'm satisfied because that's how they're, that's how we're going to be, you know, selling and, and kind of, you know, growing. Um, so, so I think that's, that's just not intuitive for a lot of folks. And that's one of the big challenges. Yeah, I can see that for sure. All right. Well, um, for, again, listeners, if you, uh, you know, do this, go check it out. LimaCharlie.io. Um, and give, give Max feedback on things that you see and get a demo if you want to see a demo. Um, but I think what you'll see there, the same thing that I recognized and what Max hit on is this is a different kind of company that does things differently. And uh, I think we can, we can use that. It'd be different if you were doing things differently, but you didn't have kind of the scruples to go with it. You know what I mean? The, the, or, the morals and ethics, but uh, we've got a good combination there. So I think I'm excited for your, Thank you. your future. Thank you very much. Brad, do you have anything to add? We're gonna we're coming up no, towards the end of the show. No, I'm excited to I'm excited to try it out. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. Well we did have one uh, news topic that our marketing team did want us to go over. Um, I don't know if I feel like it. Should I? No. I didn't even I'll be honest. Oh yeah, that yeah, half of medical devices have critical vulnerabilities. We did the um, uh, biohacking village at DEF CON which is a, a hospital set up basically. It's real life stuff. And I, I mean, I'm not super great at that stuff. And it was disturbing how much I was able to get, right? I'm, I'm more of the blue team versus the red team, but it was like, oh, hey, I can change dosage on this pump. That's not good. Right. Well, and our, our red team did take, uh, did take the, uh, they won that CTF at DEF CON. So that was cool. Yeah, by hacking, yeah. Well, and, and it says over half of medical devices. I'm glad they said over half and not half because it's definitely over half. Every medical, you know, every environment. And hospitals have gotten a little bit better, I think, in segmenting. And there are some good products that have come out in the last couple of years to help, you know, hospitals and healthcare agencies identify those systems, you know, primarily around asset management. Uh, but yeah, there's still so far to go. And I mean, the sad thing is that people are going to die. You know, I mean, it's just like, you can see where this leads, uh, you know. I wonder if it's, an, if it's <clears throat> if the, the, the reason behind this is an extension of the same thing we saw in IoT, right? Where mm -hmm. people think they're just building, you know, physical devices, so it doesn't, security doesn't really apply there. Right. It's... Yeah, for sure. And when and we've known, so we've always used the definition of uh, it's administrative, physical, and technical, right? The administrative is the people part, and we have a saying that 
information security isn't about information or security as much as it's about people, right? Because functionally, people are always the victim, right? If they weren't, then we wouldn't care. And the second piece is people are always the cause. It's not always the person clicking, you know, the button. It might be the guy coding, you know, how this medical device works, right? So that's number one. And, and it's easier to go through your secretary than it is to go through your firewall. And nobody gives a crap about your firewall when I can come steal your server, right? So we have to branch off into that physical piece. Um, so when people do look at information security, you have to look at it holistically. It's not an IT issue. It's not a technical issue. Obviously, Lima Charlie kick an ass on, the, on technical aspects of information security, but we can't do that in lieu of the other two parts, right? That's right. In, uh, in intelligence, we used to joke that in, in some cases, right, there is the question of like, how hard would it be to go and, and hack into, you know, this specific thing somewhere in the world? And, and the joke was, well, it's probably a lot more cost effective to just, we're, we're going to give a thousand dollars to somebody in a briefcase. They're just going to show up to the guy at the reception, just open the briefcase. So, you know, it, yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Why would I spend? Yeah, I mean, and you know, the attackers we face are money motivated, money motivated attackers, right? So return on investment mm -hmm. does mean something to them. Why would I spend hours and hours and hours trying to bypass, you know, a, a firewall or exploit some vulnerability when all I have to do is pick up the phone or send you an email? Right. I get a better return yeah. on my investment. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of hospitals, I think, have fallen to the, uh, what do they call it these days, the, the, the CEO scam or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Just yeah. over an email or over the phone. Yeah, we get that, for, we get that at, at uh, even at FR Secure. Uh, uh, yeah, nobody's falling for it, but because, you know, that would not be good. But it was, uh, what was it, before last Christmas, our CFO texted me. You know, I said, Evan, I need you to go, um, essentially asking me to go get some gift cards. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I respond back and go, you do realize who I am, right? And and uh, and it was actually her, right? This, this this conversation, it was, she did actually want me to go get some oh, really? gift cards. Yeah. <laughs> And so I, I, I said, Vinay, you got to go about this all different. You know what I mean? When I get a text like that, so I did go get, a, get her gift cards. And those gift cards are being used to, I think we were handing some of those out to uh, our security team for some of the stuff they'd done. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But it was just weird. You're like, mm, no. Uh, the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, good episode, man. I, I'm, I'm really, really honored to, to meet you, Max. I'm excited about your company. Anything that we can do to help out and preach, uh, you know, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. It's Sounds good. good. It was great. Uh, really, uh, really had a good time. And anytime, anytime you need anything, also happy to help. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. So the last thing we do as tradition is we give shout outs. So we just take, you know, a minute. Brad, who, you got any shout outs for anybody? Um. You know, since we talked about it, I'll give a shout out to the IR team. This guy's just, it, it's what, two and a half years old? And they, you know, Oscar and I started it, and where they're at now is so far beyond where I'm at. It's just amazing to watch them, them grow and get better. And we have one guy stop the incident in 17 minutes. He found the uh, initial breach. Wow. So they're, they're good. That's impressive. I'm going to give a shout out to, uh, Kevin, believe it or not, my, he's like my work wife for people who don't know Kevin. Uh, we've been partners since 2010. Uh, some days I just want to stab him multiple times. Some days, you know, I want to give him a big hug and, uh, he's, but he, the one thing he's always done is he's never, ever lied to me. He's been the most reliable person, you know, over the years and some of the stuff he does in the background, people don't even know. So I'm just going to give a shout out to Kevin. So Max, do you have a shout out? Did anybody come to mind for you? We're putting you on the spot. Uh, a little bit on the spot, but honestly, <clears throat> I think um, for a lot of people that, that we work with, so a shout out to all of the people doing incident response that have to wake up in the middle of the night and yeah. have to do kind of the, the you know, the non-glamorous part of the job, uh, but that is also the tip of the spear. And 
none of us would have any jobs if uh, if you know these people weren't there to do the the hard work. Awesome, great shout out. All right, that's a wrap.